Access Project. Finishing up Access Project 1. So let's find Access. Go to my Recent. And let's review what we have here. <clears throat> because tables are foundational to Access. They are listed here in our little navigator over here. We can decide what we're <clears throat> viewing in our navigator with this little guy right here. I can decide what I'm going to see and what's, how it's organized. But normally we leave that alone and just view all access type, sorting them or, or arranging, grouping them by object type. So as we go to create other things, forms, reports, and let's see. Yeah, and queries, they will show up here. So let's see what we have to do. Uh, remember this is our owner's table. I can always right click on anything over here in my navigator. Right click, design view, and I see the design view of that. I can switch over to data sheet view by double clicking there, or just double clicking on the name of the table. It automatically opens up in data sheet view. So design view to see what the structure is in my table, the names of all the column headings. I prefer design view because I can see one by one each column field, each field which is, becomes a column heading, and the exact properties. There's lots of properties and I like to see all the details. But remember as I click on columns I also see them over here in the fields section. As I click on them it shows me each one of those is data type short text. So I can change it here as well in, data, in datasheet view. And of course, we need to enter some data. So let's enter our second user, or our second pet owner in our owner table. Now, if I don't need to see this, I can click this to hide the navigation pane, just so I have more room to type over here. And we'll go down to our second owner, enter his information. And then we'll go on to entering our cut our clients or our patients field, our patients table. So here we go. On page, what page is this on? We're on, oh, it doesn't show me a page number. <clears throat> Figure 117 has our other owner. I have a little star here. As soon as I start typing in, in the new record line, it will then become an old record and the star will, will advance. So O-2 or owner-2 is I'm now entering data for that second owner. Now remember how this is required to be unique or as a primary key. Watch what happens if I try to enter the same owner. If I actually typed O-1, it won't say anything until I go to leave and it says, wait a minute, an error message to make you feel stupid and uh, intimidated. It changes your request to the table. We're not successful because it would create a duplicate values in the index, primary key, or relationship. What in the world do they mean? Well, remember how the owners can't have, it has to be a unique, a unique piece of data. So by when we made it a primary key, that will not allow us to have the same name on two rows. Very important for databases that there's some unique way to uh, reference each row. All right, now let's enter the rest of the data for this second owner. This is Steven. And I tab to the next field. And G U Y E N 9874 South Main Street. And he lives in Blanding, Utah. Zip code 84511. He's got a number 435, 435, 9815670, and a fake mobile phone 435 <clears throat> S N-G-U-Y-E-N at Cengage.com. If I ever leave that line, it is already 
data in my database. I don't have to save my database, it automatically is in there. I can adjust the heights of each row. By adjusting the height of any row, it makes them all the same height. So if I have any text wrapping and lots of text, I can make these very tall rows. Very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. That's why data sheet view is convenient for viewing and editing data. Design view for viewing the structure or the fields, the columns in my data sheet view. Remember, every column is a field that I determine what kind of thing goes in there. And remember our limits here, if I click on this and I click on fields, remember that owner, wait a minute, wasn't that supposed to be limited to the number of characters? Let me check this. I thought we had, were limiting the number of characters that could go in owner ID. Let me check my reference. For some reason, that did get stuck at, that was supposed to be 50, limit of 50. So check your field size. Let's go back one-on-one. -on -one. Make sure I got my field sizes correct. According to table 1-3, the field size of owner, that's supposed to be 50. Now let's click on the next one. He's, he's a little worried, hey, you're shortening the size, but I know I'm not going to be losing any information. Owner, yeah, owner's correct. And that was owner first name, owner last name. Looks like the other ones are correct. Somehow I messed up setting the proper length. 2, 9, 25, 25, 50, 25, 25, 50. Okay, so it's just that very first one. I had accidentally left it at... 255, the default. Because I have made changes to the structure, when I close this, it'll say, do you want to save changes? Yes. Otherwise, if I had just been editing the data, said, spelled Stephen's name differently, and I close the table, it doesn't ask me, do you want to save? It automatically gets updated in the table without asking me to save anything. The only time it asks me, asks me to save is if I've changed the structure or the width of a column or something. Okay, so we have our two owners in our owners table. We added records to them. And let's see if we're doing anything else to this. Owner ID, tabbing through, second owner. Okay, so suppose we're done with the owners table. I can just close that. If I ever want to edit the data, I can just double click and arrow up and down, left and right. Resize the columns, we've seen that already. Okay, now <clears throat> we're going to create a second field, a second table. We're going to create a, a table for our, for our patients. We're going to do the, the second table a slightly different way. It's always good to close the things you're working on before starting something else. So I'm going to close the owner's table, clicking there, or right-click, close on the tab. Now we're going to create a new table, but we're going to create it in design view. To create a new table, I'm going to click here on create, and I'm going to go to table design, not to table, but to table design, because I like design view better. I could have gone to table and then switched to design view, but I'm going to jump right into design view this time. And one by one, we're going to get the names of each column. And my book is hard to, hard to read here, so let's, there we go. We're going to enter for our field, or for our first column, the first field is patient ID, space ID. I tab, yes, it's going to be short text. Everything in here is going to be short text. And we're not worried yet about the limited length, although I can see right now the default field size is 255. We'll leave it at the default until they tell, the code, tell us to go back and change it. So we have patient ID. We have patient, patient name. Oops, patient name here. Tab, tab, tab. 
animal type. Can be dog or cat. We're going to leave it as short text. Breed of dog or cat. And now here's a very important one. Owner ID. Owner ID. This is also going to be short text, but this is a very important field because <clears throat> this is referring to the owner of the pet that's over in another table. So let's put in here reference in the comments to owner in the owner's table. This is why the nerds call this a relational database. This table, this data in this table, is related to the data in the owner's table. Every owner or every patient that comes in has a related owner that brought them in. They don't come in on their own. That's one of the rules in our business rules of our veterinarian. But this is the relationship to between the two tables. The owner owns a, a pet. A pet is owned by its owner. Those two tables are related. This is how we connect the two tables. The owner ID is referenced by each patient. We don't reference the owner name. We reference the primary key in that other table. That's, that's one of the main rules in databases. That's why Access likes those primary keys. We always reference the primary key if we have tables related to one another. Now before we save this and start editing the, the actual patient's name in here, how did I get down? How did that get way down there? What happened? Somehow, oh, that's weird. Somehow I got way down. I didn't realize my slider had moved down and I entered this. I'm going to delete the extra rows in front of there just because I want it at the top. I can s s click there, shift select, and I can delete the, oops, shift select. Delete rows. I thought I could. Let's try hit the delete key. There we go. Delete key deletes the extra rows. I accidentally went past some empty rows. Yeah, and before leaving this now, we want to make sure patient ID, in order to make sure Access is happy with my table, we want to make that the primary key. So I just click on patient ID row, and then I click primary key. And now I have a little key next to him. That means I can't enter the same patient ID for two different patients, and that will be your required field as well. Let's see here. They don't tell us anything about the field links here. Let me check to make sure we haven't missed anything about field links. I, and if they don't mention anything, we'll just go with the default links because we there's plenty of other things to worry about. Yeah, it doesn't look like they made any made us change. We may go back and change that. Let's now, because we want to enter data for three patients, now that we have the structure defined, let's switch over to data sheet view. And it's going to have me save the table before it switches over. And so we're going to call it patients. This is our patients table. So we're going to save the table, call it patients. And then hit enter. Now I'm in data sheet view of that same table. And we have a few patients. We have three patients, C-1. Patient's name is Paws. Animal type is Feline. Breed Calico. And owner ID. <clears throat> Another important concept. If I type this wrong and put O-3, I would, I would be referring to an owner that does not exist. Right now, it will let me type O-3, but we're not going to. We're going to type O-2, just because we know there is no other owner than O-1 or O-2. Eventually, we'll learn how we can make sure access doesn't allow us to type an owner that doesn't exist just by accident. We could type, right now, it would let us type any name for an owner ID, 
not knowing that there was a, not actually an owner that had that idea. That would be a horrible thing. That's called Orphan Records. A cat paws would never have an owner if we entered the wrong owner ID. So now we'll enter another. This is C2, C-2. Name Ranger. Sounds like a dog's name. Canine. And it is Canine Labrador. And owned by O-1. Tab down to the next one. F-1. Fluffy. Feline. No, nope, that's what they have. Maybe they'll go. To get, maybe they did that on purpose and have us go back and correct it. It makes sense that it would be a feline, and that is also owned by O dash one. I can always go edit the data. I'm just checking to see, did they have a, did they ever go, no, they still have it in the book. The figures in the book are still showing C, C, and F. Okay, now we can adjust the columns as we like, but these, these are fitting pretty decently, so I don't have to worry about adjusting columns. If I did find a cat or dog with a very large name, then I might adjust the column. Now, we did enter data. Let's go ahead and control S or close it. If I ever close it and, need to, and it needs something saved, it'll ask me. I can always go back and review by double clicking or closing. Double click, close. Notice here when I click this, it remembers that I had resized the rows the next time I open it. So close that one. And now we're going to save you some time. Instead of designing the next table that we need, we're going to go get the data for the next tables. We're going to be importing it. Problem is, I haven't unpacked. I haven't unpacked the files yet, so I need to before I go to import from external data. I need to go download and unzip the access files. So let's go over to Schoology and let's access the access files. So I go down to where is our resources? There we go. Textbook resources. Word data files, PowerPoint, Excel data files, access data files, right here. I click on that, and it shows me all the module three, modules one to three data for access are here. I'm going to make sure I download it to the correct file path. There I remember it. It's M drive. Users manning documents, CS11. So I'm going to go ahead and save that zip file. And now I need to browse over to that zip file. Because I'm using Chrome, I can come over here and do show in folder. And there's that zip file. I'm going to right click, extract all. And it showed me it's going to just extract it to this 97035 folder access module data. I'm going to click extract. And inside of there are three other zipped files. For now, let's just unzip chapter one's file, a mod one, mod zero one data, right click, extract all. And it's going to put it in this same folder. So I click extract. And now I can browse down into there. And there I see the files. We're going to be bringing data in from that access file. We're not, we don't need to open that up in access. We're going to go back to our access now that we know where we've extracted the files. So be sure you have downloaded and extracted the access data files. Otherwise you won't be able to import tables saving us lots of time. So download the access files unzip them twice, all of them, and then the module one unzipped. And now if I go back to access, now I can ask access to bring in data 
from a new data source. And the data source is from a database. It's an access type databases. Type database. There are other types of databases. This is one that most people learn if they get into databases. That's the Microsoft SQL Server. Another Microsoft product, Azure. Other more general formats, DBase. I could even get data from websites or data services or other access databases that are running and that are letting me link to them. And I can even import from text files. But since we have it in a database, we're going to go to from database, access database. And now we're going to browse to where I extracted those data files from the chapter. Browse, browse, browse over to that folder, users, Manning, documents, sys101. There's the folder, access module one. Double click down into that. Double click again. There is the table, or that's the database I want to import tables from. Double click on that. And now I have the choice. Do I want to link to it or do I want to import it into my database? Unless you have a gigantic database that you would just be doubling a huge amount of space, it's best to import so then it won't, you won't lose track of it if you move your database around. So links are kind of brittle. If you move a file, the link is broken. So we're going to import it into our database. And it shows three tables are there. I'm going to go ahead and do select all. We're going to import all the tables that were in that database into our project and I click OK. I don't need to save the import steps. It's a one-time thing. So I'm going to click close. And look at that. I've got three more tables brought in from another database that someone built for me. Let's just view the data by double clicking and say I have a list of appointments. I can click on the fields. I can click on design view and see how they're designed. Now they're not all short text this time. I can close that database. Oh, sorry. That's the one I was working on. The one that we imported from, I was automatically closed. I can close the table. Here's the other table, treatment cost, design, for us. Most everything is short, is short text. Close the table, not the database. And veterinarians, a list of our veterinarians. Now let's go back to appointments. Let's see appointments again. We have appointments. We're referring to F1, C2, and C1. So we are referring to valid patients. This would be another thing I would have this is a relationship between the appointments table and the patients table. I am referring to the patient ID in the patients table. Another relationship here is I am referring to the owner in the owner table. And just for another relationship, the veterinarian is being referred to in the veterinarian table. These are all important ways that databases work. Multiple tables related to one another. And the whole purpose of having multiple tables is we don't want to list the veterinarian information twice. We only want to have William Black listed once. And if they ever refer to him from some other database or table, they refer to him by its primary key, not the veterinarian that works in Dolores. You could always look that up, but if his address changed, we only want one place to change it. We do not like redundancy in databases. It's inefficient. So the veterinarians is being referred to by the appointment table. So we call that the relationships between all the tables. Owners own patients. 
appointments is a relationship between a veterinarian and an owner. Oh, they also refer to a treatment cost is applied based on the treatment they choose. So as you think through how a veterinarian would keep track of things, you organize your data by the types of people that come, types of patients, who works on them, what, what medications they take. That all needs to be kept concisely so you can generate reports, send people their little COVID, you need your, you need your booster. Okay, so we have all those tables. Now we're going to take a little video break. <coughs> uh, just to learn about access queries. Let's see if we have any good YouTube videos about access queries. Something short and concise and understandable. There are many videos out there you can't understand what they're saying. <coughs> Here is one, not very long, just a five minute video. Let's see if this guy's any good. He's going to create an access query for us just to give us some understanding of what queries are. So let's skip the advertisement, call it off, turn off closed captioned, and Let's see, I better stop recording or my YouTube recording might get cut because recording, having other people's recording in here. We're going to build our own query. We're going to uh, use the query wizard at first. He was using the designer, but we're going to build it first a little easier than what he showed. Now let's think of what we might want to query about our information. How about what appointments are uh, going to happen in 2021? Well, I would get the list of all the appointments. What if instead of the 0-1 for the owner, I might want to see the actual name of the owner? Well, I'd have to get that information from the related table owner. If I want the actual name of the veterinarian, I would want to know what veterinarian matches the veterinarian listed in this column. That would be the data in the related table veterinarians. But just for a simple query, such as uh, what patients are receiving the T-4 treatment? Well, I should get two in the resulting list. That, that appointment and that appointment have the T-4 treatment scheduled. If you're doing an inventory of a, say, a shoe store, you would have queries of what particular size of shoe is available, what particular, how many shoes of a particular color are available. Anything about that you do, you are querying your database. That's where the power of the database is, getting information from the stored data that's in our tables. So let's close our appointments table. And we're going to start a query using the easy wizard, and then we'll build more. On the second project, we're doing a lot more queries. So let's just see how it would work building the query. Using the wizard, I go to create, and then instead of query design, which we'll be doing later, I'm going to let the query wizard guide me through building a query. And we're looking for a query that is simply going to do the simple query wizard, there's lots, there's a few fancier queries that we're not even going to worry about. Most of this course we're doing simple queries. Click OK. And now it needs to know, well, what table would you like information from? Well, the table that we want information from is our the own is the owner table. Right now, because the last thing I had selected is appointments, I want to change that to the owner's table. We want information from the owner's table. So table colon owners. 
Now, what information do we want from the owners? Well, we want their first and last name. So double click first name and it sends it over to the selected fields side. Owner last name, double click. Owner street, city, state, zip. Okay, double click street, double click city, state, postal code. And we don't need their owner ID or their phone number or email because we're not mailing them, we just want a list. So what this is saying here is the information I want to display from my tables is determined by the query that I write. This is trying to be more friendly than the way it used to be where only nerds could write what they call SQL database language. But it's not a super hard language. Basically, it would say, select for me the first name, last name, street address, city, state, and postal code of anybody in listed in the owner's table. I click next, and if I want to view the information that would be produced by that query, I click finish. And let's see, that is the information about all my owners. I only have two owners. I'm getting information about both of them. I'm not sorting it in any particular order, so it's coming at me in the order that it got entered into the table. Notice it's not alphabetical. If I wanted it to be alphabetical, I could come back to the home, home tab design view, and under here say, let's go ahead and sort by owner's last name. And now, viewing it again, I see now my Owners are sorted by last name and happens to be sorted by first name as well. So design view of my query is a friendly way, or they're trying to make it friendly for the average person to be able to use databases. If you want to know what the nerds would have seen back in the day when they wrote this stuff by hand in, in like a programming language, you can come up over to view and click the little down arrow. You can actually see the query language that we are building when you're using this little design interface. This is the stuff that we do in our advanced database course. We learn what all this means. And a few times reading through it, it's really not that hard. It's just like a, a different way of stating what you just did. Select for me all this information and only display or query the results only the query results contain or they're sorted by the owner's last name so there's where the sorting part comes in you are welcome to learn about the sql query but we only need in this class to know how to enter data or view the data generated by a query or design you how to change the query to do what we want now before, I, uh, before I'm done here, I'm going to save this by closing this. It'll ask me to save changes. If there are changes that need to be saved, yes. If I ever want to see the data produced by that query, I can always double click. And I can always go back to design view to see how did I, how did I get that information to be, to be displayed. So click, the toggles going from design to the output of the query, the selected data. Okay, so that's building a query. Now we did this way at the start. We're going to build a form that will allow us to view uh, the owners in a nice form, user-friendly form. And this is done with the three clicks. I choose the owners table that I'm going to be creating a form on. I choose the Create tab, and I choose Form. I'm not going to worry about going into Design View or starting from scratch. I'm just going to go Create Form, and it creates a decently user-friendly form 
that one by one I can view the information about my customers. So when you go to a doctor or take your pet to a veterinarian, they're going online into the cloud, likely, or they're using an app to keep track of your pet and your, and your payments. That's a database behind all of that. So now we have created a form, and I can, let's see, they're asking us to do what? Uh, oh, yeah, we, we created the form. We can view it as a form, and we can use it just by browsing left and right. They have a little browsing bar down at the bottom. I can browse through my data. Now, because we have such little data, it's just as easy, saving changes, I'm closing that, it's just as easy if I want to see this, yeah, an owner's a good name for my form. I could just as well just edit the raw data about owners. But notice what I see when I have the owner's form, I can't mess with some of the other fields if I haven't selected them in my wizard. This form does allow you to see everything about the owner. Let's try this again on the query. This time, let's choose our owner's query. And now let's build a form. Create form using the quick launch. And now I have a table or a form that only lets me see what that query, owner's query, was selecting. So notice I don't have the owner ID or the phone numbers and email. So this query would give me just the information from the owner's uh, query. So yeah, the owner's owner's query. See how that's owner's query? Now it's an owner's query form. So if I close this, it'll ask me do I want to make changes? Yes. And I'm going to call it the owner's query form just to remind me that that is the form. And of course, it gets categorized down here as a form. Now, the last thing we're going to do, I think it's the last thing in this project. Yeah, the last thing in this project is to create a report. Now, I could get a report of all my treatment costs, all my patients, all my owners. But you can also create a report on the information produced by that same query that gets us all of our owners, but without some extra data. <clears throat> so how do I print, how do I make a report? Well, first of all, let's close any extra things. Let's close the form. Three, a three click way to create a report. This time, I'm going to create a report based on the reason, what the query gets for me. And I click Create. See how that still stays selected. And I'm not going to use uh, Report Design. I'm just going to click Give Me a Report, Please. And it will take a report from what's selected over here. And let's see what I get. I should get uh, two owners listed in my report. because. We didn't import anything into our owner's table. And there's my report. I can adjust things so it will fit on one page. This is ready for printout. After I make it a little more visible on that printing out page. So although it doesn't call itself a, a form or a report editor, you can modify some things here while you're viewing the report. And it has an, this extra page only because there's some data out there that is wanting to make the second page. But this is really the, the only thing terribly that's even useful in the owner's report, or yeah, the owner's report. Let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to give it the name Owner's Query Report. 
just to remind me that the information for this report came from the owner's query. We're going to be working a lot with queries that get data, pull data, consolidate, do some analysis of data in databases. We'll do some more of that on Monday, and then the chapter, and then access two will be all about queries. So save your database the way it is now, make a backup, 